hello. I would like once again to talk about the Spongebob musical. Uh, specifically, this time, I will be reviewing the Spongebob musical's UK tour in a broad sense. What I liked, what I didn't, and then my overall thoughts. And after that, I will be doing a long and perhaps excessively detailed breakdown of all the changes that I noticed between the Broadway version and this tour, which will be specifically aimed at fans of the Broadway version who are curious about similarities and differences between the two, but are unable to come and see the UK tour live themselves. Um, I have seen a couple, I think, of YouTube reviews already on the show, uh, some by people who I believe are specifically like theatre YouTubers, um, but I come to you not as a theatre person, but as a specifically Spongebob musical person. Um, here is my list of credentials as to why I, you know, I, I, I feel like I can speak on the topic uh, and represent Spongebob musical fans in this way. Um, but uh, what I'm trying to say is that I, I hope my perspective here will be valid as it comes uh, from somebody who cares very much about the Spongebob musical as a whole. Um, so I saw the 16th and 18th of May performances in Manchester. Tom Reed Wilson, the alternate Squidward, um, was on as Squidward, and all other cast members were in their usual roles. Um, since the 16th of May was the opening in Manchester, we noticed several famous drag queens in the audience. Um, they'd rolled out like the yellow carpet for them. Uh, presumably they were there to support Davina De Campo. Um, and my group and I actually had a brief conversation with Jamie Campbell. Uh, we talked about hair dye. His was just like sprayed apparently with like spray paint. And I was like, oh, I go to the little shop called Duty Free in the Arndale and I got some crazy colour. Um, at the time, my hair was yellow. Uh, it was nice to be matching him. I think he's really cool. Uh, as a side note, I hope you think all of our outfits are cool, um, because me and my group uh, all made sure that we were on theme. Uh, we tried really, really hard, and I think we all looked great. Right, well, I'd like to get into some general observations. Um, it's non-replica, which is a good thing. Uh, I think since the pro shot of the Broadway version uh, is widely and easily available to watch, and this production therefore keeps it fresh for you, especially if you know the recording well. Um, so the choreography is new and presumably, I think, unique to this production. Uh, this was very fun for me as someone who knows, obviously knows it really well, because, um, yeah, you know, it felt really fresh. So I was like consistently excited to see what they would do in each number as it came along. Um, most of the performers do a very good job of maintaining both a character voice and an American accent. As far as I know, uh, none of the cast members are Americans. Um, standouts, I would say, on doing their character voice. Uh, Hannah Lothar's Karen. Tom Reed Wilson Squidward, and of course the, the members that play the trio, Chrissy Beamer, Sandy, Lewis Cornet as Spongebob, and Irfan Damani as Patrick. Um, all brilliant. Um, the script is the same, but presumably as the US touring production, which I haven't seen, um, but all the same lines, jokes, and song lyrics that were locked in after Broadway's opening night when they froze the show. Um, but with the addition of the town pledge at the end that I believe was added during the first national US tour, that it's included on the pro shop. Things I enjoyed. Uh, so obviously, I mean, I just, I enjoyed the performers themselves. They're wonderful. Um, especially the trio that plays SpongeBob, Sandy and Patrick. Yeah, that's my faves. So, um, you know, they were in good hands. Uh, the, the performers are really like, quite young and they're very cute. Um, I've already touched on the new costumes in a previous video and seeing them in person really like solidified some of opinions that I was having. Uh, like the sort of younger looks for Spongebob and Patrick kind of suit their more childish and silly personalities. I know that sounds ridiculous. How can they be more childish when Spongebob and Patrick are already so childish? But um, yeah, they're kind of like big toddlers. I really think like Ethan Slate as Spongebob genuinely seems kind of mature in comparison to Louis Cornet's. Um, and that's really funny. Uh, also, uh, the harmonising, you know, just the singing, the singing, every, they duet beautifully. Louis Cornet and Irfan Damani, they duet beautifully. Um, both of their songs together just just splendid. They sounded great. Um, and yeah, I think, like, sort of, as a whole, all the costumes read really well as uh, the characters that they're supposed to be. I particularly really liked Sarah Mercade's take on the sardines, and I did touch on their super sea star saviour gospel looks. Um, but their, their first appearance, uh, they're wearing like grey raincoats and they've just got the funny little hats on. They're just great. Um, I really think just the costume design was fantastic. Um, I also enjoyed, there was like a little bit of UK specific um, 
like stop the spread COVID esque, uh, you know, branding. We, yeah, if you're if you're in the UK, you remember, you remember the stop the spread branding. Um, it made me groan, but also I laughed, um, and I, I did laugh a lot when there is a cat meowing outside. If you hear that, if you hear a meowing, it's because there's a needy cat outside who I'm I'm neglecting. Maybe I should let him in. Anyway, when I saw old man Jenkins, he um he was like carrying a, a big thing of toilet paper. That was funny, you know. Let's have some, some real world jokes. Hold on. What's going on? Why are you crying? Why are you crying? I'm recording. Oh. Okay. Okay. I just know if I try and pet you, you'll scratch me. Okay. Okay, I also enjoyed that everyone seems to be having like a really good time. Uh, the energy is infectious, everyone's comedic timing is great, and the vibe is just like fun, fun, fun. Um, there is also some gender diverse casting for the understudies. Um, I will, I'll show you them, I'll show you who they are and then what sort of roles they understudy. A few of them have been on now, which is cool. Um, uh, and it reminds me of uh, this letter that Tina Lando wrote, saying that she was hoping that future Spongebob productions uh, would indeed include this kind of diverse casting. Um, which, if you've watched my big long video about the costumes from community theatre productions uh, of this show, then you'll already know that that's been happening for a while and it's just fantastic. So, excellent, very good. Okay, let me get specific about what I enjoyed about the performers. Um, so, Louis Cornet, obviously the star of the show. Uh, fun and funny, very much silly and goofy. His SpongeBob voice never wavers, um, but he also has a lot of fun with doing sort of the I'm manly voice that SpongeBob does do in the cartoon. So he's very like true to the, the wacky vibe of SpongeBob. Um, great singing throughout um, and is obviously like, he is the gayest SpongeBob ever. Um, I love him, probably not as much as he loves Patrick. <laughs> uh, just just splendid, you know, he's, he's great and fun and good. Um, the only thing I would say is that I maybe don't believe him so much during the more emotional moments, um, but I think as a whole the show maybe doesn't linger on any of the emotional parts. Um, nothing really keeps him down, but that's fine because it's Spongebob. Uh, Chrissy Beamer as Sandy is wonderful. Um, as I learned, uh, and I think I did mention in the costumes video, is that she had already played the role previously um, at her drama school. Um, so she sort of came into the role of Sandy already like, I guess, knowing it really well and having that strong connection to the character. So that's nice. She's really like made the role her own. Um, very committed to the Texan role, like fun and athletic, cute and, you know, very reliable. I, I like her a lot. I think she's a great Sandy. Irfan Damani, I hope I'm saying it right. Irfan? Irfan Damani? Uh, wonderful to see a brown actor in the role. Excellent. Uh, very funny. Very adorable, uh, which I've said about Sandy and Spongebob, but really it's just because they're all so dang cute. Um, anyway, killer voice on this guy. He is fantastic, very charming, likeable, and I do believe him in the emotional parts. Um, you know, he just, he nails it. Like, he's fantastic. Again, his comedic timing is really, really good. He's just so funny. Love him. Love him. Then Tom Reed Wilson. So I haven't, uh, while I've seen the show twice, I haven't seen Gareth Gates, who was sort of the big star that they were billing as Squidward. Um, stunt casting, yeah. Um, I saw Tom Reed Wilson, and I think he it just, just splendid. He's really sort of withering. He's such an old queen, um, and I adore him. I do think having LGBT actors play these roles really does make them shine. Um, I really believe his Squidward. I just think he's just, we're just keen on him. Um, and I think there's like a bit more beauty to his singing, um, like to his singing voice. The the actor's regular voice, um, he's got, I think he's a presenter, he's got like a presenting persona. Um, very sweet, high, delicate tone. He just sounds lovely to, to hear him talk. And a lot of that is in his Squidward. So yeah, just, he's just a beautiful Squidward. I think he's tremendous. Davina De Campo really suits playing a villain. Her evil laugh is spectacular. Um, but I would say De Campo's plankton overall is a bit more of like a, oh, like ooh, ooh, sad boy, um, sad little emo boy. Um, it works. Uh, unbelievably swaggy during Going Gets Tough and she nails the fast rap. Um, and she really gave 100% to the plankton versus crabs rivalry as well. Like I thought that was very good. 
But Karen, as played by Hannah Lothar, I enjoyed thoroughly. Uh, she's got really one of my favourite looks in the show. Um, but again, she was just really funny. She just they're all they're all so funny. Um, I also thought that the guy playing Mr. Krabs, I need to look up his name. Hold on. Richard J. Hunt. His name is Richard J. Hunt. Richard J. Hunt is Krabs. Um, he actually has a voice very similar to Carlos Lopez from the original Chicago cast and album, uh, rather than Brian Ray Norris's deep, Clancy Brown-esque voice. Um, but he's so, so funny. I think he- I, I know I've said everyone's funny, but I think he was the funniest one in the cast. Like, everything he did as Krabs, I was like, peeing with laughter. So funny. Um, then Sarah Freer as Pearl. She went all in on her Valley Girl accent and I loved it. Uh, she really played up like bratty and dramatic for Pearl um, and it was just splendid. And of course, you know, she sang her face off A++. Um, then standouts from the ensemble. I need to look up some more names. Hold on. Okay, Theo Reese. Theo Reese as Larry, I thought he was great. You know, there's not a lot for Larry to do, but every time he was, you know, doing doing Larry, I was like, Yes. Uh, um, I think he's a bit more campy than his Broadway counterpart, but I, I, I do believe everybody is so campy in this. It's a very, very campified version of the SpongeBob musical, which is already so camp. Um, I just, you know, I really enjoyed the way they highlighted that. Um, Eloise May Davies as Puff, Mrs. Puff, really, really good. She's also Gary uh, and really nails the, like, the Mal, you know, she's fabulous. Um, and the the one who plays Jenkins, I believe, Reese Kerridge. Hold on, that was correct. Reese Kerridge is his name. Uh, the one who played Jenkins. He really, especially, seems at every moment to be having just a fantastic time out there. Um, he is also an understudy SpongeBob. I haven't had the pleasure of seeing him, but a friend of mine has and says he's very, very good. Okay, I'm now going to do the weaknesses, which I think is the most agonizing part, obviously, because it's something I really love and I had a great time, but um, there were weaknesses um, and let me lay them out. I think that the set is genuinely really rather disappointing. Um, it consists of static flats, they don't move obviously, static, the wren, um, and not an awful lot of colour. Um, David Zinn's design thesis for Broadway's set was that it would be to be making use of trash items, things that would pollute the ocean. Um, uh, things, you know, were incorporated in the set that looked like the sort of thing you'd find sunk at the bottom of the ocean. Right, yes, so the, the this UK touring set lacks a lot of those elements. Um, you know, so at the back of the stage it looks a bit like a submarine, um, and then there are sort of two, two screens, but really quite small screens, uh, that direct our attention to things like the news broadcasts or what have you. Um, uh, there, there are actually... Um, the volcano, however, it is decorated with uh, empty disposable water bottles, um, which conceptually I like, although I don't really like the execution. Um, you could always say that the set is minimal due to it being touring, but um, I honestly just think it, it, it looks sort of cheap and unmemorable, which is sad. It's sad. I feel so sad saying this. Um, I just think it, it's not a successful uh, set. And I've seen tours before, like it's, it's possible to make them really beautiful, exciting sets. Um, so, I don't know, man. It is what it is. Uh, right. Um, also, being that it's a tour, uh, there's no patchy merch shrine or audience interaction. Whatever, I suppose. I was looking for a, a video clip evidence of Patchy's merch shrine and it, it's staggeringly difficult to find these days. I feel I was looking at people's vlogs on YouTube of when they went to go see it in New York. I had also done one. The best I could do was this clip here from when I went to see it. But um, I'm flabbergasted that I don't have a proper visual there of Patchy's merch shrine. I know it exists. I know I can find one. Um, but also... I, I'm devastated that I can't go back. As I look now at this and how just like absolutely stunningly gorgeous the Palace Theatre in New York looked when it was all decked out for Spongebob, it was like genuinely the most beautiful place I had ever been in in my entire life. Like it was just gorgeous. Everything was so, so beautiful. And I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm genuinely feeling like a little bit of like... Uh, emotional distress. I can't believe I, I can't believe that I, you can never go home again. You know what I mean? Like it's it 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 will it will never exist again like that. And, but my my goodness, oh, it was so good. It was so beautiful. Ah! Right. Sorry about that. Let's get back to it. 
Patchy leads some sort of like Nickelodeon sponsored giveaway instead for like a Nick watch, like a kid smartwatch. Um, there is also no pre-show with the band to set the Bikini Bottom mood, which I thought was really quite sad, you know, that the, the, there's no... There's no vibes, there's no like ukuleles playing, it's not, there's no bikini bottom vibes to sort of get you in the mood as you enter the space. Um, kind of a shame. Um, and then moving on from sort of just like set weaknesses or logistic weaknesses, I suppose, um, I would say that it is a, a production that that seems a little bit more unserious, not to say that the US versions were serious. Um, because they weren't, obviously. This is a great time. But I do feel that this UK tour maybe doesn't ever want to let the characters reach a moment of, like, true emotion. Everybody is always a bit cartoony in how they react to something. Um, and perhaps, like, the the challenge of doing a character voice kind of, kind of stops some of the performers from being able to access, like, an emotional moment. Um, because they're focusing so much on doing a character, doing character voice. Um, yeah, so, so, so maybe the reason is so that the children in the audience uh, don't feel too much like their cartoon faves are in real peril or actual emotional distress. Um, but I think it does sort of knock the whole thing back a little bit from being for everyone, as its Broadway tagline was, to being more like for kids. Um, pause, consider thoughts. Um, I, I suppose just to give an example, um, so towards the end, uh, spoilers here, maybe skip the next 30 seconds if you don't want them. Um, but but the, the culmination of the story is that all of the citizens of Bikini Bottom think they might die. Like, they think they might just all die. Um, so Spongebob leads them through the best day ever, um, which is fun at the, at the beginning. And then he's sort of like, for the, the last part of the song, they all get a bit sad. Everyone joins hands and they like brace themselves and they're like, oh, you know, this could be it. It could be the end. Um, you know, it's like a beautiful moment of like, you know, community or whatever. Um, but I feel <laughs> there was absolutely no time between, um, them like, you know, we're celebrating it's the best day ever, then we're holding hands, you know, it's the best day ever, but it could be our last day, um, to then the, the volcano not erupting, okay? There was absolutely no lingering moment where they, they did not leave us even for like, 10 seconds to think that it might not have worked. Like, they stand there, it didn't erupt! Like, I, I probably gave a longer pause just then than they did. Um, and then, yeah, like, it just sort of sped through a lot of the emotional moments. Again, I suppose it's a crazy thing to even say, like, I want to be crying at the Spongebob musical, but you know what? I do! I do want to be crying, and it's, it's rough to compare, like, you know, compare the two versions but when i went with my sister and my friend to new york and we saw it on broadway and ethan slater was there in person bawling you know like tears were on t i was crying i was there were tears and um i didn't ever feel like i was close to tears um it didn't overwhelm me with emotion although maybe it's just because i've seen it so many times like in recordings um right <laughs> i need to calm down what a goof loren okay <laughs> enough <laughs> obviously all that said i had a great time uh my fam of friends and fam all you know we dressed up in our bikini bottom fits and i even got to interview with a children's media program called media cubs to share my thoughts on the show one of their sort of like grown-ups clocked me in my extremely over-the-top outfit from across the sort of mezzanine seating and was like, we'd like to speak to you about your thoughts on the show. Um, and I was like, I would love to talk about my thoughts. Um, uh. I really love all the songs. I think when they did BFF, it was the cutest thing ever when they were doing all of their little handshakes. I just loved it. The, the, the little girl who interviewed me, very, very good interviewing skills, very serious. I felt like, like oh my goodness, I don't want to mess up here. Um, it was fun. Uh, Otherwise, you know, there's nothing like seeing your favourite musical theatre show live. It is my favourite thing, and it's been several years now since I saw it in New York. Um, so, you know, going to Bikini Bottom, it's like going home. I, the joy, I was so joyful. Um, also, I really like, actually, uh, sort of the the promotional side of it, the, the social media side of uh, the UK tour. How cool. Hold on. 
Well, right, so he's my flatmate's cat, and she's away right now. So he's he's missing her, and yep, he's he's biting me. He's biting me about it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Aku. I'm sorry I can't be who you want me to be. Yep, okay. <sighs> okay. Um, yes, so th the cast has been doing beach cleans. They've got a little highlight. Oh. They've got a little highlight on their Instagram page. I'll just... Well, I'll just pop into it. Um, we can see here, you know, they've been they've been at it. How do I make it not do that? Well, here we go. I mean, you know, here they are. Uh, they've been going to various beaches in the UK, and I think they also did a canal clean. Um, so, you know, they're fishing out rubbish from the oceans, they're fishing out rubbish from sort of our waterways. I just think that's really, really nice. Like, um, obviously, as we know, Stephen Hillenburg, the creator of the cartoon, he was a marine biologist and really cared about... Um, the ocean and ocean conservation stuff. So it's nice that they're also sort of doing these little conservation efforts. I think that's something that's very, very fun. Um, and like like a good thing to, to sort of have for your, your young audience, you know. Lead by example. It's very good. I'm, I'm very fond, yes. Now, is it worth seeing? I would say, of course. I, I would say that this version of the show is definitely different enough that there will be things to entice and surprise you if you've already seen the recording. Um, and if you haven't seen it in any capacity before, it's a great production to introduce you. Um, uh, if you know the cartoon, the script does have a few sort of Easter egg type jokes like baked in. Um, and the whole show, and this version especially, really has that sort of wackiness uh, and the vibe that's very true to the cartoon. And honestly, like, at the end of the day, it is just a bit of fun. Like, it's a fun one. It's not, oh, what a challenging piece I'm going to see. Like, it's just a good time. Um, and especially uh, a good time to share with the family. You know, if you've got young kids, they will love it. There were lots of children in the audience both times that I saw it, and I could hear the enthusiasm, you know. Nothing but joy. So that does conclude now the review section of the video. It may already be quite long, I'm really not sure. Uh, <laughs> right, so now what I'm going to do is go through sort of a play-by-play -play of changes from Broadway uh, to the UK tour during sort of each number as it goes along. Uh, we'll just go top to bottom. Uh, this is aimed at and will make the most sense to people who are familiar with the Broadway version and or have watched the pro shot uh, and want to know what's different but are unable to come see the UK tour. If this isn't you, and you just wanted my general opinion of the production overall, then I thank you very much for watching, and you will see me again if there's another one. Goodbye. For those of you that remain, uh, I will now go through the differences between the pro shot and the UK tour. For example, visual gags and major staging differences, I will describe them all to you. And uh, if a slime tutorial or something uh, never surfaces, then this will have to do you and we'll just engage our imagination. You know how it is. Okay, let's do this. Let's open the show. The prologue, Bikini Bottom Day. Uh, rather than a simple cardboard sort of flat pineapple, the house is a rotating sort of three-sided prism structure. So SpongeBob wakes from a bed the same way that Tracy Turnblad does during Good Morning Baltimore. Um, Patrick's house opens up as a door, so he falls through the opening and it's very fun. Uh, this is a relatively small cast. The members of the Electric Skates are also members of the onstage band. There is a Foley performer in that band, but there is also a variety of Foley instruments placed downstage left by the Krusty Krab flat set piece, and various ensemble members use that at various times. Uh, they use a rubber pig for the Squidward, like, squit, squit, squit sound when he's walking, um, uh, and it's not really that fitting. Honestly, it's more of a, well, like a pig noise, like, Quonk, 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 quonk. It doesn't really sound like Squidward's tentacly feet. Um, Pearl is using what appears to be a clamshell Polly Pocket Compact as a phone, and I love that. The Chicago Premier's Pearl used an iPhone with a shell phone case, so this is sort of bringing that vibe back, and I love it. Um, Anyone wondering why they haven't seen anyone playing Perch Perkins in trailers and show photos will now realise that Perch is an on-screen only character who we see during TV broadcasts. Um, so he's just on the screens. I wasn't sure about this at first, but to be honest, I'm not mad at it. Uh, it does make sense, and also the actor is a journalist here in the UK and appears on Good Morning Britain. 
Right, yes. But sort of, as for the, the number itself, uh, overall, it, it's similar in the same sort of way. SpongeBob goes around, greets all of the different citizens of Bikini Bottom. You can actually see a full comparison of the two versions of Bikini Bottom Day. Uh, I put together a little like side-by-side -side thing here of the UK tour cast on Blue Peter and then the Broadway cast on Good Morning America. I thought I would use, while there is a pro shot, I thought I would use um, uh, a performance by the Broadway cast in a similar setting uh, where they were also sort of on like a TV studio. Um, so that makes sort of the best comparison between the two. Uh, yeah, you can watch that whole thing. I'll I'll put a little link to it just as an unlisted video, and you can you see that the sound is quite cacophonous. But um, it, we're all about the visuals here, you know. We we come into the Krusty Krab where we get our first news report. Now let's go into No Control. Richard Arnold presumably does sing as Perch, but there's a like a vocoder type effect on the voice. Uh, so who knows? It, it it's entirely possible that he is just you know. Like, not a good singer, and they were like, we really just auto-tune this, and let's just make it, like, you know, all all crazy. Um, but I do think it really works for the vibe of the song. Um, the choreography of the whole number is fairly similar, I would say, to the Broadway version. Um, although Spongebob does not do the splits. Uh, I did like that the trio all sort of, like, huddle at the front together, all holding hands, and they're just so, so, so cute. Like, this is this is what they look like to me all the time. Just, like, toddlers holding hands. The, ah! Um... That, that's no control. BFF transitions in with Patrick screaming, as in Broadway. Um, everybody sort of like scurries off and he's just there in the middle of the stage like, ah! Um, but there's no stretching sofa prop in this. Instead, they briefly use a, a tinsel-filled paddling pool and a large pink sort of balloony ball as the biggest, baddest bubble. Um, they do a multi-step, very fun sort of like best friend handshake. There's lots of trust falls. It's good times. SpongeBob falls into Patrick's arms and he's like always looking at him with just such hot eyes. Like, you know, I truly believe in the love between them. Um, best, best friends. Love, love, love. Um, they have their faces like just, you know, millimeters from each other at multiple times. You know, this is a gay SpongeBob. This is a gay SpongeBob. We love to see it. Um, Spongebob jumps into Patrick's arms here. Um, they don't get a, a hug later, which is sad. So this is sort of like the only time that they really do like any any hugging. Um, but they're just so, so cute. Uh, so this is the move they do to write BFF, unlike doing this, like they did in Broadway. They do this. Right, I'm just trying to remember what they actually did. Uh, I think it was something like, like, like this, like B. <laughs> I could be really wrong. I, I, right, so they did, they, they like jump into like a B, F, F move. But as I'm doing them now and seeing myself, I think, I think it was nothing like that. But right, so they did BFF with their body, okay? That, that's what they did. Uh, and also it looked like they did a little bit of sign language, I presume, BSL or maybe Makaton, um, for like BFF, they, you know, they did that. It was wonderful. It was a, that was a really nice little detail. I was like, oh, that's good. That's good. Let's have it. Um, so that's BFF. When the going gets tough. Um, so obviously Plankton has a sort of like little spiel beforehand where he explains his plan to Karen and what he wants to do. Um, during going gets tough, he, he there is like a fun little bit during sort of that that monologue where he's like, when fish are scared, woo, they school together. So they all sort of like do that. They they do these little moves and then they you know they're spread out and then they huddle when they school together. Uh, they're just sort of doing the actions as Plankton describes, where they're like, whoa, we're hypnotized. Um, I thought that was wonderful. I really liked that. Um, then when they get into sort of like, give me a beat, Karen, uh, she does like a, oh baby, baby, like Britney Spears thing. Very fun, very fresh. Um, but they did not bring back the beatboxing from the Chicago premiere. And I just, I was like, when will we have that back? Why can we not have that back? Um, so the choreography in this number is very, very fun. Uh, we still have sort of the, the backup dancers, you know, for Plankton's squad, but it's staged more like a rap battle. Uh, so Plankton and crew are on one side, like, uh, and then um, SpongeBob and the citizens are on the other side, like, you know, we're doing a lot of this. Um, and then sort of as Plankton is convincing the citizens of Bikini Bottom to sort of, uh, you know, of his plan, they all sort of like scurry over to his side. Um, great way to do it. 
Uh, then after the number, they also add like a little Western standoff between crabs and plankton where they're like slow motion on either side of the stage and it's like that. And they're like, hmm, you know, do, it, do a bit of this. Like, um, really good. That was a great little addition as well. That's something new. I like it. Yes. A simple sponge. This is staged much the same as Broadway. You know, it's dark. The illuminated sponges are sort of like highlighted with the, the UV light and... Um, that then they sort of put together to make different shapes of representing what he's singing about. Yeah, it's similar. Um, Krabs starts off as a face represented by the sponges. Uh, that's cute. And then he, he actually like sort of comes down into the number rather than being like on a, a separate level higher up. Um, please. Please. <laughs> I feel so bad. Um, also, Louis Cornet, he sort of went for that big final note and he nailed it. I, I don't know if he does it every night. Um, but he nailed it there. It was really good. Daddy knows best. <laughs> um, much like in the pro shot or the US tour, the Krusty Krab set is very stripped back. We only really have the cashier boat for the set. Um, Mr. Krabs, you know, as usual, is pulling out dollar bills. Uh, then for his uh, dollar signs in his eyes, he puts on a pair of dollar sign novelty glasses. Um, but then uh, ensemble members start to like come shimmying out. You know when you get to that money, money, money part, they, they, they like all shimmy out, and they've they've each got um, like a bag, a, a swag bag, a, a bag of cash on as like a bra. They're like you know, I've got money tits, um, <laughs> and they do a great little bit of sort of like tossing and catching the bags in between each other while they're circled around crabs. Very good. No one fumbled a bag. Very professional. Um, Really, really enjoyed that. Uh, there is no large burger costume for Mr. Krabs's One More Krabby Patty Before the End ad campaign, which I think is a shame. Let's proceed. Hero is my middle name. Uh, this is my favourite song in the show. Um, so uh, I've said that there were two sort of small screens. Uh, that's where Land Mammals Go Home is. Um, I, it's sort of like Jenkins spray paints it on there, but it's 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 small. It's it's a small thing, just sort of at the at the side, at the corner of the stage. Um, the jellyfish umbrellas are a lovely white tulle and tinsel. Um, and then choreography wise, this is not as acrobatic as on Broadway. Um, I, they, they don't do so many like cartwheels and stuff, or, or flip each other over, things like that. Um, but I do absolutely love that any time the, the, you know, they're doing sort of the break where they have Sandy explain her plan and the sort of like Mission Impossible, impossible? Mission Impossible type music starts playing. Um, SpongeBob and Patrick are like always, every single time going like, like they're doing like dance moves, you know, rather than focusing, they're like not focused ever. They're like, we must, we must dance. We must dance. Um, as in Broadway, though, the, the choreography is still centred around the boys, trying to convince Sandy of her heroism. Um, Patrick lifts Sandy up so she can rescue Gary from a tree. That's a fun little thing. Um, and, uh, you know, cute. At the end, Sandy sort of wipes away the land mammals go home graffiti from the screen. It's not really as impactful as her kicking a wall and breaking it in half, but um, I suppose they're just working with what they have. Um, uh, in the lead up to Super Sea Star Savior, we have sort of that dialogue bit where Plankton and Karen freeze them. Uh, so here they like mess around with them while frozen. At that, that's sort of part of the course here. Uh, so what they do is they flip Sandy over um, and then Karen smacks her on the ass. Uh, then they stick SpongeBob's finger up his nose and they put Patrick's hand on SpongeBob's bum. So it's really all about like, let's touch each other's butts, you know. Let's make them touch butts. We're touching butts, we're making them touch butts. Let's touch butts. <laughs> Super Sea Star Saviour. So the sardine costumes are so delightful. I think I said earlier that they start out in grey raincoats to make them look more sort of like actual sardines. Uh, but at this point, they've switched out those raincoats to like a red or maybe a hot pink um, with all the, you know, all the trimmings, the gospel vibes. Um, choreography here is, it's great. You know, lots of like Mexican waves. Uh, and they do have the sort of hand boning solo uh, that Patrick does and then all the sardines join in, but they don't do it with tambourines in this. It, it is a sleigh. It's a sleigh. During Tomorrow Is, all of the Bikini Bottom citizens have been knocked to the floor after boulders happen. 
so they're all sort of like sweetly helping each other up. You know, this this is kind of a nice little moment. Um, Plankton and Karen in particular, I noticed they sort of, they hug each other like, are you okay? Are you okay? Um, so that's nice. Uh, what is absolutely heartbreaking is that Patrick in this is not flanked by sardine followers during this number. Instead, he's sort of like off to one side, looking very sad and very guilty and very alone. Um, and he gives SpongeBob the most longing look ever on the line, I wish it was with you. I'm like, oh my God, no, my boys, how could this be happening? Um, I, you know, I really just, I believe Irfan Damani is Patrick. He is, oh, he might be my new fave. You know, I think he's fantastic. Um, that being said, unfortunately, uh, you know how I said that uh, Davino DeCampo and Hannah Lothar are surprisingly like un um, as pa Plankton and Karen. Um, there, there's just there's no implication during this number because they sort of went for the emotional angle on those two um, that they have just engaged in you know copulation. Um, there's no implication of that here. It's just like sweetness. Um, excuse me again. Uh, I think I might be having my recordings a little bit crossed. During the entirety of the Broadway production, Plankton and Karen are having all those married couple bits, but I think it was only in the Chicago version of the show where during Tomorrow Is they come out and they, they have like clearly been going at it. Um, so, sorry about that. So it sort of closes, you know, Spongebob and Sandy are at the front again. They're holding hands, but this time they're, it's not complete because it was the trio before and now it's not. It's just two of them. Ah, emotions. Um, you know. There you go. So that's act one. Those are all the changes so far. So, poor pirates. We come back in after the interval, uh, act two is beginning. Um, and Patchy starts off first by announcing the winner of the Nickelodeon Nick watch giveaway. Um, then, uh, then he'll get into the poor pirates number. Um, I wasn't really sure what to make of this guy's accent. I think he sounded a little bit Irish, uh, but maybe, you know, pirate voice, Irish accent. Um, <laughs> uh, while he doesn't play the accordion a la Broadway's Patchy or Tom Kenny in the pro shot, he does play the guitar because he's um, a member of the onstage band and one of the electric skates as well. Um, I really enjoyed when, you know, the sort of, the, the, the band drops out so we just get the percussion on the last chorus. That's, they did that there and I thought, hey, that's great, very effective. Um, but, you know, sort of, as it were, there's, there's not a lot going on. It's just the pirates sort of yarring and arring and they're, they're playing instruments. It's, it's good. I like it. Okay, the sort of Bikini Bottom Day reprise one scene where he's waking up. Uh, this plays out mostly the same, but um, Spongebob, when you come back in after the one hour later, is lying like flat on his face like this. <laughs> And it just had me like peeing. I was like peeing with laughter. It was so funny to me. Then uh, Sandy's eruptor interrupter is sort of a less abstract, you know, light and an actual mechanical sort of, it's a bubble wand and she does demonstrate it. Um, you know, I, it's a change. Uh, then otherwise, uh, so this Larry isn't threatening to SpongeBob the way Broadway's Larry is. You know, he's like, <clears throat> I'm taking my job seriously, and I will hurt you with this weapon. But um, this version, this version of him is a lot more like playful about his role as security. Um, he's like, uh, well, his jellyfish on a stick is just like a little tiny one on the end of a pencil. So instead of being like, don't make me zap you, bro, he's like. Don't make me zap you, bro. And then he like wiggles it at SpongeBob and they go like, hee hee hee. You know, gay. I love it. Um, <laughs> that's it for that. Here we go. Right, Bikini Bottom Boogie. So while it's fun that the skates, the electric skates, are actor musos and they've been the onstage band this whole time, uh, and therefore they're actually playing their instruments, um, I, I find it flabbergasting that they aren't skaters. It's in the name, the electric skates. And the song lyrics also kind of make reference to skating. Um, so without these skating tricks, the number itself just looks a little bit static, I would say. Like, um, you know, the, 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 the band members are in the center of the stage. Pearl is with them. She's belting her face off. And then we have the same sort of thing in Broadway where she's got like a little squad of friends who are cheering her on with signs. Um, I believe the ensemble member who plays the mayor like passes out um, and she's just lying dead on the stage for part of it, which is funny, but it just it's not as thrilling as the Broadway version. And I was like, oh, I'm not like thrilled. 
Uh, but it was, you know, it was still enjoyable. I really enjoyed the the one who was playing the kita. He was wearing this very exciting pair of like s- sparkly see through trousers. He was wearing something underneath, but his sparkly see through trousers, are very cool. I liked them. Chop to the top. <laughs> Chop to the top contains very little in the way of mock karate moves or really chopping of any kind. Like, at no point did they do really any of this, which I was, like, very surprised about. Like, why are we not chopping, you know? Where's the chops? Um, (laughs) Sorry, I have misinformed you here. There was one instance where they were chopping and I found evidence of it here, but I I promise this is, like, the only time they chop. At least I can remember. Like, they really don't chop a lot. It was just this one time. Weird, but uh, yeah. So Mount Humongous is represented this time not by cardboard boxes and ladders, but by three set pieces, just three, um, covered in the plastic uh, disposable water bottles. Um, This is a fun angle and it does bring in some of that trash from the ocean vibe into the set that was, you know, part of sort of the, the design thesis for the Broadway version. But I just personally don't think it's executed very well. Like, the centerpiece lights up to sort of signify the magma um but sort of like choreography wise sandy is picking up the water bottles and then just like chucking them she's just like chucking them into the wings uh i i don't get it really i'd like i i think it, it, it i don't know it's muddled it, it just looks a bit weird um and uh because it's it's really just two moving staircase pieces um it's less necessary for the actor playing SpongeBob to really do anything acrobatic, there there isn't really any sort of like climbing or squeezing or, or you know, it doesn't really look like a struggle because they're just sort of being pushed around on stage, looking like this. Oh, oh I'm being moved, but they don't seem to be doing anything of their own accord. Um, yeah, it's just not as acrobatic as, as the Broadway version. Um, but there was something that really made me laugh. I'm going to have to demonstrate using a plushie or something. Hold on. Um, I w- I'll use this SpongeBob, actually. <laughs> so, you know, sort of like the, the, the last chorus. <laughs> I feel silly what I'm about to do. The last chorus. Sandy is at the top of the stairs. SpongeBob is a little bit below her, okay? Like, imagine I'm Sandy and this is SpongeBob, okay? So she's like... The final chorus, she's just like, I'm gonna chop to the top. And she's like shaking him by the shoulders. Chop to the top, chop, chop. And she's just like shaking him by the shoulders. And it's crazy. It's like, wh- wh- what is this? It was so like like surprising and weird I, that I found it very funny. Both times I was like, this is so weird. It's hilarious. I love it. Um, Yes. <laughs> okay. So that's a chop to the top. Okay. Um, Right. <laughs> Uh, then the next number is... The next number is I Guess I Miss You. Uh, cute and emotional. Uh, these boys really have lovely voices. And I think, actually, that, um, Louis Cornet and Irfan Damani sound very, very similar to Ethan Slater and Danny Skinner. Uh, they harmonise beautifully in the same way. Uh, really, there's not a lot of differences, though, obviously. Spongebob is sort of on a ladder piece and Patrick is sat below on, uh, well, his throne this time is a, a clamshell pool floaty, which is very cute. Um, but, you know... There's obviously there's no like dance moves during this number, so it's it's not like there are really that many differences that would be possible. So that's that. Not a loser. I just realised I should have done a Squidward look with this hair colour. Um, so I'm not a loser is a sleigh, obviously. Um, I, I I I think this performer Tom Reed Wilson just he his voice is so so wonderful. I just think he's wonderful. Um, but it's quite clear that he's not um like a tap dancer. You know, he's not somebody who's tapped out of the womb the way Gavin Lee did. Um. But yeah, he, he, he pulls off the number, it's great. Uh, what I like is that they're sort of a bit clearer about that part during the middle where Squid Edward is trying to like rein in the sea anemones and they're sort of getting out of hand and getting all silly. Um, so there's the part where he demonstrates the steps first and then they copy. They slow that down a little bit during this so um, that we really focus in on the moves he's doing. Um, but then, you know, it picks up and it, it is as, as, as usual. It's great. We love that. We love... We love well. We love well, I'm not a loser. Okay. Simple Sponge Reprise 2. No, 1. Simple Sponge Reprise. Uh, Patrick coming in to rescue is so, so, again, so, so, so funny. I was like crying with laughter. Um, Because this is a touring set, although, I mean, I have I have seen tour, touring productions with a flying mechanism, okay? You can fly people on a tour, uh, but they don't fly anybody in the SpongeBob tour. Uh, instead, 
um, the moving pieces that represent the the volcano. It's three pieces. So the centerpiece uh, has been sort of. Uh, <laughs> Uh, repositioned so that Patrick can fly in on it, um, lying on his stomach. Uh, let me see if I can demonstrate with another plushie. Um, well, I need something to be the, the set piece. Right. Hold on, I'm just grabbing things from my room. So imagine this is the volcano set piece. I believe it was a volcano set piece. One of the sort of rolling set pieces, right? Okay, so this is a set piece. Um, it's off stage, right? SpongeBob and, and Sandy are like, these are my last words. I want you to remember them, okay? He's like, look over there, it's Patrick. This is how Patrick comes in. SpongeBob. He's like, like just fully on his stomach, like one arm forward, one arm back, like a spoon. And his, like, his eyes were closed the entire time, and there was something about his eyes being closed. It was just so, so funny. Crying, crying with laughter. Um, really, really funny. But then they didn't hug. They didn't hug each other, and that... <sighs> That's sad. Um, yeah. So that's it. Like, Patrick coming in to rescue, absolutely hilarious. Um, and then, like I said, Mount Humongous obviously is not as perilous uh, a set, so there are no acrobatics. SpongeBob then, during his part where you know, Sandy and Patrick are like, only you can do this because you are s small and stretchy enough to squeeze into those tight spaces. Uh, there are no tight spaces to squeeze. He does no squeezing. Um, Basically, he, again, he's just sort of climbing up the staircase while the ensemble members move the staircase around. Um, so again, he's just sort of like, ah. um, and you know, it, it really doesn't visually look like anything that would require a specific person who could squeeze down really small to do it. Like, it, you know, um, but there it is. Then they do uh, a really funny little throw me the thing gag where the actor playing Larry enacts the slow motion flight and spinning of the device. Oh, right, I need something else to be. Right, okay. We're gonna use my we're gonna use my Smarties 110 film camera. This thing works, by the way, although I haven't got anything developed yet. Right, so imagine this: a, a SpongeBob is on one side, Sandy's on the other. Sandy is like, I've got the thing. SpongeBob's like, throw it to me. Sandy's like, okay. So she passes it down. Right, Larry intercepts. Larry has it. So then he. He's like, ooh, he does this, he does this, he does this, he does this, and then SpongeBob catches it, okay? Funny, I liked it, I liked it. Um, then, sort of similarly to that, when he's dropping, dropping it in, he's sort of just like, mm, like he's holding it, he places it down gently and then keeps, yeah, <laughs> just like that. Um, and that's that, that's that's that scene. Okay, right, we're close to the end. The changes during Best Day Ever, right? Uh, actually, it's it's pretty similar again. Um, during the little speech at the start where SpongeBob is like, I'm not finished. Um, he's positioned sort of downstage left while everybody else is sort of, sort of spread out that way. So uh, while he's yelling, they're all sort of reacting like this. Um, like they're being, like they're being blown away. Uh, and that was very funny. I liked that. Uh, then you know, it's the same sort of thing as as it normally is, where SpongeBob sort of like he he's sort of much like in Bikini Bottom Day. You know, he he's going around and interacting with each member of sort of the the township, uh, encouraging you know stop fighting. Or I think he 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 wrestles <laughs> the phone from the mayor or tries to. And um, one thing I thought was particularly delightful was um, the, the beginning part of the song where he's like, Mr. Sun came up and he smiled at me. Uh, then he said, uh, at this point, like he, he does the deep and manly voice again. Um, so he stood on the one side, Larry is stood on the other, and then Larry sort of lip syncs to the, to the lines that he's saying. So he's like, w what's the line? It's gonna be the best day, just wait and see. So he's, he's singing that, and then Larry is like lip syncing that. I just thought it was cute. Uh, and the reason that Larry is is doing that at all is because he he's holding this the stick. Have I mentioned the stick? There's a stick that indicates like day and night, and he sort of like rotates it depending on you know when they say night has fallen or it's daytime. There's a sun on one end and a moon on the other. Um, yeah, that moment cute, love it. Uh, otherwise, a little bit of like skadoobity ba ba doo ba dee ba improv from SpongeBob, just sort of like as we're melting into that slow part where they all join hands. Um, but SpongeBob doesn't lead everybody in a clap before they join hands, and I'm like, where's my clap? 
Where's the clap? Um, <laughs> um, yeah. But, yeah, fair enough. Um... And again, like I said earlier, uh, they really don't linger on the emotional parts uh, enough or, or give them a moment to breathe. They really do hurry right from one thing to the next, especially during this final chorus, the countdown, and then the bubble scene. Uh, all of it feels very rushed. Um, they do let it breathe a little bit when they do the town pledge, which I thought was nice, but um, there is there is no moment of consideration from Sandy when the boys are like, you know, this is your home, this is where your team is. It, it, it takes her a millisecond to say, someone get me a guitar! There's really no, like, you know, I just think it needs that little moment of her, like, really just taking that in. Um, but ho-hum, there it is, you know, like, again, it's for kids, isn't it? Like, no emotions, we're for babies. Um, okay, so, finale, the Bikini Bomb Day reprise, again. Bikini Bomb Day finale. Um... As normal, Spongebob has his ukulele, and Sandy has a guitar, Squidward has his clarinet. But um, I, I, I saw this twice, I didn't manage to take in absolutely everything, so I'm not sure. Um, Patrick has a Krabby Patty in each hand. Patrick has a Krabby Patty in each hand, and um, I believe the Krabby Patties are actually like squeaky dog toys, so he might have been squeaking them during this number. Uh, Plankton has a triangle, I think, and Larry is air guitaring on an inflatable dumbbell. Um, just good times, fun times there. Um, when Patchy runs in, there's no crash through the ceiling. He doesn't really make very much of an impact on, on coming in. Uh, I felt like they could have done a little something, or maybe even like a sound effect of a crash. Anyway, when Patchy runs in, um, what was quite cute, and I did like, is when he was like, Oh, there you are! Um, Spongebob is like, selfie? <laughs> um, and uh, they all take like a groupie with Patchy, so you know, like, Patchy's there in the front like, way, and then everyone's behind them. Um, during one of the nights I saw, but not both, uh, Spongebob, like, took off his glasses and smouldered into the camera, and I thought that was hysterical. I was like, that is so funny. Um, really good. Uh, that's it then. You know, we, we come down to the, the bows. We applaud! Oh, wow. Wonderful! Applaud, applaud! Um, everybody does sort of like a little in-character bow, which I think is really cute. Um, I think I can probably show you some bows because that's something we're allowed to, you know, film and share. Uh, I, the, the bouncy energy is maintained just the entire time and, you know, you really get to see like how how much uh, the performers really shine in their roles, you know, just like right to the, the end of the show, they're like, well, hey, hey, I am Spongebob, or I am Sandy, or I am Patrick. Uh, just, just wonderful. Um, then, of course, we get to the theme song. This is the same. Uh, they encourage you to sing along or scream along, and I did so. Uh, then, as normal, you exit. There are no confetti cannons or beach balls or streamers as there was in the Broadway version, but I assume that was something they also didn't have during the tour uh, in the US. Um, not the biggest, you know, thing to miss out on, but again, like, obviously I can't help but compare uh, the greatest night of my life to, you know, like a nice, it, like it's still, it was like a little homecoming and I, I really did have a very good time. Um, it could never be the same, but I don't think I would want it to be. Um, yeah, it's just really wonderful. Okay, so that concludes um, me sort of laying out for you uh, what I can remember that was different. Um, so obviously I did see it twice um, and I didn't notice too many changes sort of between nights. So I imagine most of the things that happened are things that happen every night. Um, the performers probably, you know, as you do when you're on stage and it's live theatre and every show is, is different in some little or perhaps big ways. You know, if you were to see it, it could be different than what I've said, but these are sort of the major differences and stuff. Um, and yeah, I just, I've, I've had a really good time, like really thinking about it and just, just remembering how much fun I had. Uh, so the tour is still going, it's still on and still can be seen until I believe September. Um, don't quote me on that. Uh, I've talked for a long time. Uh, thank you for watching. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. Um, and you will see me again if there's another one. Goodbye.